In the next 10 minutes, I will uh, introduce the next session on esophagus. And basing on the case scenario, I will present to you the scenario of a chest pain and uh, accordingly to a gastroesophageal reflux disease patient, or GERD, as is mainly known. Gastroesophageal reflux disease represents an entity where reflux of gastric content causes troublesome symptoms and complications. The prevalence of GERD, uh, as it is known in Western countries, has been estimated to be 10 to 20 percent, and in this way, it represents the main reason to address in primary care. A proper diagnosis and treatment are important because in this way, it, it's the treatment and diagnosis is aimed at excluding other diseases, avoiding overuse of drug or intensive tests, and also reducing symptoms and managing complications. So a young woman was referred to our center by the cardiologist for non-cardiac chest pain. And she has several episodes of chest pressure several times per week in the last three months. The chest pain was associated with shortness of breath, and also this chest pain occurs sometimes during the night. Associating with this chest pain and pressure, she also experienced heartburn and regurgitation during the past two years. And as the history uh, she was telling us, these symptoms occur mainly due to overeating. One episode of chest pain was so severe that the patient was, uh, she felt the need to present to the emergency room because she was worried she was having a heart attack. But the cardiac enzyme uh, assessment and also an exercise stress test, which were performed right afterwards, were normal. So as it uh, records of this case, we have two main clinical questions. What is the most likely diagnosis in the case of a young woman? And also, what is the next step in the management of this patient? Because the causes and the etiology of non-cardiac chest pain is complex, and the uh, diseases are many which might be involved. In facing a patient with cardiac chest pain, the first disease you have to rule out always is a coronary artery disease. After you rule out coronary artery disease, according to the predominant symptoms, you might have, for example, if your patient has dysphagia, you might have an esophageal disease like achalasia or eosinophilic esophagitis. If you have regurgitation, maybe you are in fr facing a patient with rumination syndrome or some gastroparesis problems. Or you may have a problem of pain due to the chest wall diseases when you have hypersensibility when you palpate the, uh, the thorax of a patient. And if you have mainly extraesophageal symptoms like asthma or a cough, then you can uh, rule out and you have to, fo uh, to focus on some pulmonary diseases. And of course, don't forget the rarest causes like psychological, a, pain, a panic attack, or some vascular diseases. Because there is a brain gut axis for esophageal chest pain, as it was demonstrated in several studies. And the first one in 1996 showed that in patients with coronary artery disease showed on angiogram when there was a chemical stimulation of the esophagus, as it happens in gastroesophageal reflux, reflux, then this patient also experienced a decrease in the coronary uh, artery flow, as it was demonstrated in the intracoronary Doppler studies. More so, in another study from 2004, 60% of a patient which experienced uh, reflux symptoms also had a myocardial oxygen desaturation. And controlling the reflux symptoms also uh, allowed the control of uh, uh, coronary artery disease symptoms. This patient, after uh, clearing out reflux symptoms, they never experienced again uh, chest pain. So it's often difficult to differentiate non-cardiac from cardiac chest pain because this chest pain uh, might appear uh, exactly as an angina patient. And also, as studies showed, the quality of life of this patient may be uh, roughly in, um, uh, influenced, and also these uh, symptoms might increase the ORC absenteism. GERD is presented around 50% uh, of patients with non-cardiac chest pain. And of course, there are typical symptoms which mar, uh, might uh, raise the suspicion that you have a patient with GERD. And you might try some empirical trials of PPIs, as you will show, uh, will be shown in the next talk. 
And besides the typical symptoms, of course, we have atypical esophageal syndromes and, of course, extra, extra esophageal symptoms when you have to look out for other uh, organ diseases. So when should we try an empirical trial of acisupressin therapy or PPIs? I will not insist on it because it will be presented uh, in depth in the following talk, but this trial sometimes can, be, uh, uh, can help with a diagnosis of GERD. But keep in mind that 50% of GERD patient, or patient without GERD, they will experience an improvement after PPIs, and 70% of GERD patient will improve after PPI symptoms. So it's not always easy to differentiate between them. Also, what about endoscopy? I will not insist either because it will be also presented in the following uh, talk, but as an introduction, roughly two-thirds of a patient with GERD, we will not find anything during uh, upper GI endoscopy. So endoscopy is mainly uh, uh, indicated to exclude other diseases or to look up for complication. So always send your patient for endoscopy when you have a typical GERD patient or you have to check for healing after a severe complication of GERD or, of, and of course, surveillance for Barrett esophagus. So, as you can see, the differential in GERD disease is mainly uh, the same as the differential in non-cardiac chest pain. We have to rule out esophageal disorders from the benign one, functional one, to the more severe one, organic ones, and also other abdominal uh, disorders, mainly when your patient experiences dyspepsia. And don't forget about the uh, severe one, like coronary artery disease, or pulmonary and oropharyngeal and laryngeal diseases. What about when should we ask for a gastroenterology assessment in this patient with GERD symptoms? So usually there are some circumstances which require a gastroenterology speciality examination. When you have typical symptoms which do not respond to PPI, or atypical symptoms, when you have Allen symptoms, or you have a patient prone to develop uh, Barrett esophagus, like in nocturnal reflux disease, higher BMI. What about to refer your patient for a gastroenterology uh, um, a speciality institute? Then usually when the, uh, m most of the gastroenterologists will be happy to assist with this patient, with GERD patients, but usually when you have a patient which might have complications or it's at high risk for Barrett esophagus, or simply the patients are very interested in complex endoscopical procedure, as you will see in the following talks. So as a summary, in a facing a patient with non-cardiac chest pain, the most common cause is, of course, GERD, but only for 50% of the cases. Don't forget about visceral hypersensitivity or coronary artery disease or the cardioesophageal reflex, which might accompany GERD patient. So usually, if you resolve the reflux symptoms, the myocardial oxygen saturation will also improve. You may start the PPI test, and uh, this test is always cost-effective, but remember that not always it's, it's uh, proficient. And of course, you need further testing for PPI non-responders. As for our, our patient, the patient was starting on PPI twice per day for three months, and her main symptoms, chest pain and heartburn, they remitted completely. And after she uh, succeeded to uh, do a complete lifestyle modification and she lost some weight, then she stopped the PPIs without recurrence of her chest pain again. Thank you.